Fighting the Western world's addiction to painkillers is one of the biggest headaches doctors currently face. Until recently, popping a pill had always been the easy answer to controlling pain. But far from helping, the overuse of prescription medicines is actually killing more and more of us. Now, in America, clinicians have come up with a very radical treatment for teenagers who are suffering. Instead of drugs, they're fighting pain by inflicting even more pain. It gives new meaning to the old saying, you've got to be cruel to be kind. But the results are amazing. Be still. I'm gonna trap your foot in my legs, okay? 17-year-old Susie Lin is in incredible pain. It feels like my legs are being stabbed while catching on fire. My body is on fire. That's what it feels like. To anyone else, this mild vibration would be like a massage. But Susie is suffering from a confounding and mysterious nerve condition that can affect up to a quarter of all teenagers. And in extreme cases like this, turns a touch into a punch. Does it mean that your nervous system is on edge all the time? So essentially it does mean that in our kids, their nervous system has, feels too much. And so it sends too many pain signals. And so we're supposed to have pain signals to help protect us from things. So if you um, sit on a thumbtack, it's supposed to hurt, so you jump up. Um, but in my patients, even if an injury heals or an illness heals, the pain nerves continue sending those pain signals even though it should have turned off. <laughs> Susie has amplified pain syndrome. But here at the Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City, they actually fight pain with more pain. Conventional medicine is being turned on its head by Dr. Kara Hoffert and her team. Our mantra is, if it hurts to do something, that's what you should do. If it hurts to do something, that's the right thing to do, which is completely backwards of what anyone ever learns about pain, even in medicine. You're almost there. You're almost there. You're okay. You're okay. Come on. Breathe through it. No pain, no gain. And all of this intensive therapy must be endured drug-free. You can do it. You're doing a good job. Painkillers are prohibited for the patients, who are mostly teenage girls. There was a point when I wasn't bathing myself. My mom had to put me in the bathtub and bathe me. Why, why, why is that, Susie? <laughs> um, I physically wasn't strong enough to hold myself up. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're OK. You're not alone. Is it sharp pain or is it numbing pain? How do you explain? It, for me, it's um, sharp. It's just really like, it's sharp pain. Like someone takes a knife and it's just like, it, like digging it into you and pulling it out and they, like, I know that's probably. So it's, it's not like a headache? Like, no, but it's that too. It's pain that's so intense that sometimes you can't even move. Right. But Kansas City could hold the cure for 15 year old Olivia's pain. So today is your first day. Are you excited, nervous, or? Um, I guess I'm super nervous for everything. Today, Corey and Missy Gatlin are enrolling Olivia into the pain program. They got your back, they understand. Such is the demand for placement. The Gatlins were given just three days notice to get here. I'm just glad we finally have a program to get you in. And like any parents, they are desperate about their daughter's condition. She was a cheerleader at her high school, and she would go and cheer, and then, then she'd be out for the next three days. She couldn't move, um, you know, and we were like, Olivia, you, you cheered, but now you can't go to school. You know, it, it just didn't make sense to us. The, the thing probably that got our attention the most would get these texts at midnight or two in the morning and saying, I can't move. My neck's hurting, my, my shoulders are hurting. And it didn't line up with any of the diagnosis that we've seen prior. And, and so we're, we're like, this isn't right. Something's not right. 
When did you first realise that you had a, had a problem? Um, I can remember sitting in a fourth grade classroom and I was just like always just struggling, just even just looking at the teacher. It was really hard to hold my head up because it was so much pain. Great is thy faithfulness. Olivia is one of four children, artistic, sporty and smart. She has ambitions to be a doctor, but her pain became so acute she was pulled out of school. It got to the point where I was just like, am I, is this in my head? Like, is this really, like, a fit? like, is this real? And so it was really frustrating sitting in a doctor's office for hours upon hours, just trying to re-explain what's going on and, like, when I didn't even know what was going on. So you started questioning your own sanity, right? Right, right. I thought I was going crazy. I was like, there is no way that someone can be in this much pain and nobody knows what it is. You'd almost be better off with a broken arm or a broken leg. Right, it? something they could see. It'd be better if I had something they could physically see with their own eyes. My job is to empower you, okay? Pain is trying to take over your life right now, and that's just not okay. I actually specifically tell every patient I meet, this pain is not in your head. And that's their number one take home message for me um, because people can't see pain, they don't understand pain, and people are really mean about it. And you saying that would empower them right then and there, wouldn't it? Because they'd think, finally, someone believes me. Absolutely. There's hardly a visit that goes by that people don't have happy tears because they finally feel like there is a place that we understand what they're going through and we have a plan for them. Oh, I don't like that feeling. I do not like that feeling. It's, it's weird. It's definitely weird. When you found out about this program, what are you hoping for? Well, at first, we were just like, a sense of relief um, because we actually had a diagnosis. It wasn't something that was just made up and that there was a treatment. It's like a massage. Yeah, no, that hurts. I'm sorry, kiddo. All right, can you give me a number? It hurts. It hurts. Okay. Olivia could be here for up to six weeks. Three. It's full-time treatment. Five. Six. Made up of five hours of daily exercise, plus psychology sessions and occupational therapy. Push. Good job. Keep breathing. But it's these targeted workouts that are the biggest challenge. Right. Keep it up. Keep pushing. You got they are literally attempting to reboot these teenagers' nervous systems. Final countdown. Five seconds. Come on. Go, 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 go. But it's agony. And stop. By nature of it, it does increase their pain when they first get here because they're doing things they haven't done in ages. But in order to get better from this, you actually have to push through those really hard times in order to reset, essentially, how that nervous system is working. Good breathing. It doesn't take long for Olivia to realize she's going to be pushed to her breaking point and beyond. There's a lot of tough challenges in this program. Yes. How are you finding it? Um, honestly, for lack of a better word, hard. <laughs> Just so incredibly mentally challenging, physically challenging. They push you to the limit, don't they? Right. Coming up, diving deep. It's like running away from a tiger all day long. Yes. To escape the pain. Programs like this are life-changing and life-saving. The dramatic results bringing enormous hope. It's just really emotional to see that I'm here now and I stand. That's next on 60 Minutes. Ready, go. Nice work. Olivia Gatlin and Susie Lynn have literally been thrown in the deep end at Kansas City's Mercy Hospital. We find very weird ways to swim. Both girls are patients in the RAPS program. Olivia, really push through your shoulders down into the water, OK? RAPS is short for Rehabilitation for Amplified Pain Syndrome. Come on, Susie. Go, 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 go. A hypersensitivity disorder which can turn the touch of a feather into an agonising punch to these girls. Is any part of the pain they're experiencing imagined? No. There's nothing imagined about their pain. So it is all real and it's excruciating and there's a lot of science behind that. Dr. Kara Hoffert 
is the medical director of the program. We know um, how hard to push um, because you don't want to push too hard either. And we help these kids get through it. And so not only do they see an improvement in their ability and their function, but they start to gain confidence in their body again. Because really, when you think about it, their body has betrayed them. Your feet were fine, so shift your shoulders over your elbows more. Only three teenagers are treated at any one time. And it doesn't take long for Olivia, Susie, and the third patient, Bella Sada Nieto to bond. For the first time in a long time, they feel they're not alone in their struggles. I mean, I hate to think that someone else has this, um, but to know that we're not crazy, <laughs> this is a real thing, <laughs> is just, um, is very powerful. <laughs> I mean, I at times I felt like, what if I'm dying? Like, what if, what if I have something very, very serious. It's like running away from a tiger all day long. Yes. It's a fine line between pleasure and pain. Escaping the tiger means taking these patients out of their comfort zone. Try to tap a little bit harder. They are bombarded with sensations, touch, vibration, pressure, and temperature. Focus on taking big deep breaths if it bothers you, okay? to get the body's nerves functioning properly again, so they can. So we help them do normal things. As you do normal things, the nerves take that to mean, wow, this must be really dangerous because if you move, it's really painful. So the nerves actually increase their pain signals in response to our kids just walking. And so in order to get better from this, you actually have to do normal functional activity. And so really it's a way to teach their nerves what normal is and that normal is not dangerous. And even though it hurts, you don't have to stop. Make sure that knee gets all the way down. And this tough love form of rehab is hard, not only on the patients, but on therapists like Misty Wilson as well. It must tug at your heartstrings too. Yeah. there's. There's lots of times that um, I, I have to keep reminding myself in my own head why we do what we do. You almost want to stop. Oh, I absolutely, not almost, I absolutely want to stop. I know, you can poke me in the eye later. Nobody ever wants to work in pediatrics because they want to inflict pain. <laughs> okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. Focus on your breath. But the results here are hard to argue with. Keep breathing and relax. Good job. 90% of patients who go through the program yeah, nice, become nice, nice. fully functional. 70% become pain free. Do you think this program changes these kids' lives permanently? Um, I think programs like this are life changing and life saving. You say life saving. It's that dramatic. Yeah. It is that dramatic because we know that if we don't catch this and we don't treat this, they're likely going to be an adult with chronic pain, um, facing a lot of challenges and it would be hard to keep a job, to have a family. Um, and so this program gives them the skills they need to succeed in whatever they want to do. It's just really emotional to see that I'm here now and I stand all day. And to think that six months ago I couldn't bathe myself and I was having to, like my parents had to, I couldn't put on my own tennis shoes. Ready, set, go! Now Susie is taking right. to the stairs like a woman possessed. Good. Nice quick turn, back down, fast down, fast down, fast, 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 come on. While Bella is today running the first mile in her life. I can do 30 seconds. Yeah? Your body and your mind and your nerves get the idea that you're not going to stop. And it gets the idea that the things and the movements that you're making aren't dangerous. When's the last time you ran a mile? I've never run a mile Never before. run a mile. Go. Oh, that's so good. I know. I'm really proud of you. I think what's really important to know is how much this team cares about these kids. And the relationships we get to have with these kids and their families is unlike anything else in medicine. Well, you're the sort of last chance cafe, aren't you? Typically, yes. What did I tell you yesterday? What did I promise you? 
Um, be honest. Yep. And then am I going to tell you a good job if you haven't done a good job? No. Right. Olivia was only starting out on her recovery when we filmed her. An athletic girl whose life has been hijacked by pain. I'm not going to tell you to stop, okay? This is to see how long you can do it. The no pain, no gain mantra of this program means pushing her okay. through her breaking point. Walk her speed out a teeny tiny bit again. Heels down. Can't. Okay, then stop. Okay. Go ahead and drop. You're okay. But that is why she's here. Feels like, Olivia, you're a bit of a perfectionist. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to make sure you do everything. Absolutely perfect. perfect yeah. yeah, and it's hard because then you can see just, you know. It's long. You don't have to apologize, sweetheart. For the record, what you just did, I cannot do. I have tried. My record is 53 seconds doing exactly what you just did. And you beat me. Okay? Don't ask, don't ask me to do it. <laughs> you look really good. <laughs> don't sell yourself short, okay? Pain for me has been such a huge player and I just, I wanna take that back. I wanna be able to, you know, say that pain, it's here, it's there, but, you know, I'm in control and I can do this, basically. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.